we want to talk about our latest module, which is stock take. So for the stock take module, what we have done here is essentially enhance the physical inventory uh, functionality of Sage 300 IC. So for most of you guys who are already using Sage 300, you might have noticed that the physical inventory functionality is not as robust as we would want it to be. So for those who are not too familiar, I will just click on the IC physical inventory screen just to refresh your memory. So by physical inventory, we are talking about this. So the first thing that we wanted to enhance here was to allow for cycle counting. So all manufacturers and even distributors require good inventory control to be able to be successful. And the uh, best business practice in inventory control is actually cycle counting. So we need to be able to empower our people to do counts, not only once a year or twice a year. What we want to do is focus on critical items and count them on a more regular basis. So maybe for A1, A2 items, which are either very valuable or used quite a lot by the company, maybe you want to count it weekly or maybe even daily in some cases. So we know that Sage inventory control is a bit limited in that aspect. And this is exactly why we have created this stock pick module. So upon activation, you would see our stock take module reside within the inventory control module of Sage. So this is just to simplify the interface and uh, make sure that uh, our current users will have as little adjustment as needed to work with the product. Now, one quick thing I just wanted to show you, uh, one master file actually, is the user master. So here we are actually expanding the physical inventory to allow for counters. We don't want to only know what was the end result of the physical count. We actually want to be auditable. So we want to know who counted what item, where, at what time. And to arrive at that information, we need to have a user for counting. So this is why we have this user master over here. Another aspect of the user master is notice how I could set up location security. So if let's say if I have 10 or 20 counters in my warehouse, I can actually limit the scope of the count for the user to only a select location. So imagine if we're talking about branches or warehouses or zones. So you can now, uh, depending on how you set up inventory control, assign security to the user. For the cycle count part, notice how I can have here a cycle count group maintenance. So I could create A1, A2, B1, C1 grouping of my items for cycle counting purposes. So of course, you know that cycle count is based on the ABC logic. So A would be more critical, B not as critical. Uh, under the options table of our uh, stock take module, notice how we can make use of either value-based ABC. So this is referring to the cost of inventory proportional to the item that you have in on stock. So maybe top 70% in terms of value is A, B is 20, C is the remaining 10%. Also possible to do cycle counting based on usage. So how often do you use the item from a sales production or internal usage perspective? So maybe at the top 80% of my uh, items that I use would be considered A items, and then B would be 20%. So all of this can be set up. And under the periodic processing, I can actually do regular cycle count calculation. So I can trigger a update of my ranking, let's say every month, so that I would know for this period, the last 365 days, which items are A, which items are B. The end result here is actually a designation of our items. So let's say for, I'll just use one of the more common items in Sage. For those of you who have played with Sage for the longest time, you know our uh, fluorescent task lamp item, so A11030. I could then see here that for location one, which is Seattle, 
what is the calculated ranking from a value perspective, from a usage perspective, and then from a global value perspective and global usage perspective. So when we say global, we're just referring here to uh, all locations combined. And of course, the user can then assign which group I want to assign it to, whether it's A1 or A2. We can also do this on a mass basis using the item cycle count assignment. But that's talking about setting up cycle counts. Let me now show you very quickly how we would use this. So going now into my talk take generate worksheet, I could then indicate a scope of what I want to count, whether it's across all locations or limited to just one or two locations. I can then filter by cycle count group where maybe I would want to only pick uh, A2 items. So obviously I would have more cycle count groups. I can then indicate whether do I want to uh, include or show quantity on hand information. And this is now just to generate my cycle count. So imagine having 10, 20 different worksheets focused on different or similar same location, talking about a specific group of items to be counted. So that's essentially cycle counting within Sage 300. Of course, if I'm not into cycle counting, I can still use the same generate worksheet, but then maybe just indicate what item do I want to focus on. So maybe A11030 to A19900G, or maybe I want to take advantage of the picking sequence information in the location details table to generate my worksheet. So that's also possible. Now, when I go into the worksheet entry, this is now where the counters would input the information that they have basically counted on the floor. So let's say for stock pick number five, it's possible that my original count was 68, but maybe I counted 70. For A1105, for whatever reason, I only found 52. For this item here, maybe I counted 130. So all of this information I can save. And now if I go, let's say, to the first item over there, notice how I have here a history button. So this is now showing an audit trail of why or how we arrived at that number. So how was 70 uh, calculated? It was because uh, this user at this time counted this variance. So you would now have this audit trail to check and validate before you post the transactions. Now, what if I have items which are not tracked? So this is now another limitation that we have on the IC module that we have overcome with stop pay. So if you want to use lot tracking or if you are using lot tracking, you would notice now that with our stock take module, I could now count by lots. So in the current Sage inventory control module, you can only put in the variance after the count. But with stock take, you are now empowering the warehouse man to count lots, count serial numbers as he sees them. And eventually, after I have done my count, then I could go into the post reconciliation routine, select that stock pick batch. This is just to populate the table. And here I could focus on items with variance. So I'll just make this a bit bigger for you to see it more clear. So out of, let's say, a thousand items or a hundred items, I only have variance for this four. Prior to posting, we actually also built into the system a verify function. So if the system detects any issue in terms of uh, posting into Sage, so a quick example would be if, let's say, a serial number exists in location one but was counted in location two, Sage cannot allow you to have the same serial number for the same item in different locations. So those kinds of conflicts will then be highlighted here and uh, that's to give you a chance to make corrections if needed. And then lastly, I would just post, and that would already create my reconciliation with Sage 300. So that, in a nutshell, is what the stock take module is all about. But this is just part one of it. So 
Right now, you can see that it's a enhanced physical inventory uh, for Sage 300, but the real uh, feature or the real strength of our module lies on the mobility side of it. So here, let me now go into my phone. Right now, I'm just casting my phone. And now let me show you the barcode stock take functionality. So this is our barcode module. And uh, this is using the upcoming 2021 release for barcode. With stock tech, we would now be able to actually do stock counts using phones, using tablets, where the warehouse man can just indicate which location they are using, which worksheet. So right now we have five of them. You can select which worksheet I'm working on. And from here, then do the actual counting. So you don't need to to write it on any piece of paper, you can just input it using your phone or the handheld devices. And after I have made my counts, I could then post it. I have the option here whether to add or override. So let me just add it to my count. And this is now actually going to reflect on my worksheet. So this is uh, going back to uh, worksheet number five. This is now showing us history counts done by the person using the mobile devices. So you can imagine how we can have five, 10 or 20 users now in Sage doing the actual counts and having it reflect real time into Sage. Now, that's only one part of it. Another thing that we have enabled, aside from doing mobile stock counts, is offline stock counts. So some of you might have sites which are outside the office where internet is limited, or maybe we have cases where you have consigned goods on branches or stores. So the warehouse man can now log into his device, download, download the worksheet onto the device, go offline, so right now you can see I clicked on the request offline data. It's building up the data on my device. Eventually it will become 100%. And from here, I can then go offline, look for the batch. So again, I can see here batch number five. I can do my counts. And then when I'm done, uh, oh, just note, I'm just clicking on the line right now because I'm not uh, using the scanners, but obviously if we're using phone, I can click on the camera, I can scan the barcode. It would be the same as typing, let's say 3100 here. So the end result is the same. Or if I'm using a handheld device, it's just clicking on that scanner button and that would be creating the recording. So after I have saved it, I can then go back to the office or maybe go to my hotel, click on the upload AT count. This is now the stock take number five worksheet. I can then upload it. Again, I have the option to add or override, and this is now updating the worksheet. So if we go back here, uh, just to refresh, you would now see that I have 75 pieces counted. And if I click on the history, you can now see that this was the last entry that we did using the offline mode. So with stock tech module, we basically enhanced physical inventory, enabled cycle count, enabled lot counting, put in counters as with security to track history, and then linked it to our barcode solution to make it mobile and real time. And then lastly, we have enabled it to be, to be able to support offline modes. So in essence, that is the uh, stock take module for Sage 300. So at this point, we can actually open the floors to any question that you might have.